Good morning. Uh, this morning we are going to take apart the iPhone 4S. As you can see right here, we managed to get our hands on one and we're unboxing it as we speak. Overall, looks almost identical to the first iPhone 4. Uh, the antenna bands are obviously different. It has uh, the SIM card tray on there. Um, everything else just looks nice and clean about it. Same 30 pin dot connector. It looks like this one is a model A1387, uh, indicating the iPhone 4S. It looks like they've incorporated the pentalobe screws in the bottom to take this apart. So, in order to get that started, you'll want to use a pentalobe screwdriver. Um, you can pick these up at our website, powerbookmedic.com. And that's all there is to taking those screws off. Then the back case should just slide, slide forward, and come off. You see, there's still the plastic on this because we've not even, not even turned this phone on. We're just going to take it apart. So it slides forward. Uh, the back case looks like it has some different shielding inside, which is kind of nice. Uh, maybe it'll make it a little bit more sturdy, not crack as often. Uh, we replace a lot of back glasses at the with repairs here. I notice the layout here, there are several EMI shields, one over here, one over here. Overall, the layout is very, very similar to the iPhone 4, the CDMA version that Verizon uses. Uh, so we're just going to go ahead and start with uh, removing the battery. In order to remove the battery, it looks like you're going to have one, two screws that hold an EMI shield over the, the battery connector, and we'll go from there. These screws look like they are just standard Phillips head screws. So we'll use our Phillips Zero to take these out. You want to make sure to keep your screws separate if you can, so that way you can remember where they go when you put them back together. And uh, hopefully, in this video, we will be putting this back together and turning it on and showing you that everything is working. I'm going to use my metal spudger to lift this up. I would not recommend this for everybody. If you've never taken an iPhone apart, this is probably not the way to start out. Um, I can't encourage you enough to seek professional help when you're doing these repairs because if you damage something, you're out a chunk of change. There's a small EMI shield that goes over top of the connector for the battery. You'll notice that behind the battery cable is an antenna cable. I believe this is for the GSM antenna. If this isn't plugged in, or maybe the CDMA, if it's not plugged in, uh, you will not have signal when you when you fire the phone up. And then to remove the battery itself, we we'll just wedge your tool in behind the edge of it, because that little pull sticker right here will just tear if you pull it. If your battery starts to flex a little bit, it feels kind of like clay, it's okay. These batteries are called lithium polymer batteries. It's a redesign that Apple's been using for the last several generations of phones and on some of the, the uh, newer MacBook Pros. They are pliable. You just don't want to tear the seals on them. This one also has, it looks like it's, it's rated a little bit higher um, as far as the capacity goes than the original. So now we've got this out, we're going to take out this EMI shield here, it covers the dock connector cable. Again, just a Phillips number zero. Now one thing I noticed is that the EMI shields on these are silver as opposed to the black, like they were powder coated before, I guess. Um, makes for a prettier look inside the phone, but nothing else too spectacular. It looks like the water sensor sticker has gotten to be a big triangular shaped form instead of the, uh, the original dots they used to use. It used to be a dot over this this screw right here. So we're gonna lift this out. Again I'm using just the edge of my pry tool so as not to damage any pins underneath. You need to be very 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 careful when you're doing these things. Now that this is pulled out you're gonna see that the vibrator assembly is the the rotating oscillating style assembly 
the vibrator, as opposed to the the type they used to use up in the corner with the old GSM phones. Um, again, fantastic, fantastic design. Uh, you'll also notice right here, there's one of these uh, screws. Uh, I don't have a, a good name for it, but there's actually a screw hole set inside of the top of the screw. You'll probably have one or two more of these throughout the layout of this phone. Uh, for that, you'll need a flathead screwdriver to take out. I'm going to go ahead and remove a couple more screws here in the lower half of this and, and continue on with the disassembly. Now, as we're sitting here taking this phone apart, uh, people might ask, why are you doing that? Well, it's kind of simple. We here at Power Medic are a lot of fans of Apple products, and we love to work on things and take things apart and see how things work. We also like to fix things when people have accidents. And we know sometimes it's just not cost effective to, to go out and replace something if you drop it. So we like to provide an alternative solution for people to, to take care of certain repairs, um, which is just it's what we do. Uh, it's one of those things that, that you have to have a passion for or, or it's just not going to be something you enjoy. So, I have unhooked this cable here. Now I'm going to go ahead and take out the, the dock assembly or the speaker assembly screws on either side. And I should be able to just lift that speaker assembly out. You'll notice on top of the speaker assembly on the left-hand side, there's going to be a small triangular piece of plastic. It's really basically just a spacer. Uh, it just allows for the, the flush fit of everything inside of the phone. So, I don't know if you'll be able to see that very well or not. But that's a little spacer. Don't want to lose that. And this just lifts out and comes out. And again, just like the previous design, it's got the small teeth along the edge that fits under the edge of the LCD bracket. Um, on this one, it's just a speaker assembly. There's nothing else attached to it. And it looks like the next thing to remove here is going to be the screws for the EMI shield. We've got one, possibly two, three, four, five screws. Uh, under here, I suspect there's probably four or five ribbon connectors. And probably, of course, your LCD and, and digitizer cable under here. And I'm just going to start taking more screws out. Again, these are all going to be Phillips uh, Zero. Now, with the GSM iPhone, uh, there are a number of different size screws. And I do my best to try and keep these screws in order so that way I can put them back in the way I got them out. With the CDMA, there were just two or three different types of screws instead of like five or six. Uh, it looks like on the iPhone 4S, it looks like there's probably about three or four different types of screws. But overall, it looks like they tried to make them as uniform as they could, which should make taking apart and reassembly a little bit easier. There's another screw over here in the corner, and I'm not exactly sure what this is yet, but I suspect. I suspect it has to do with being a cable guide, possibly. Or it actually holds the headphone board in, is what it looks like it is. Your headphone board is right here. Looks like there's a bracket here that's holding this corner of the headphone board secured into place. That's my best guess. We'll see here in just a few minutes. In this video, I am probably not going to take the headphone jack out or the proximity sensor out. Uh, because those are very easy cables to tear, I will point out where they are. They run right here over to your mute switch uh, or your camera buttons or volume buttons, whatever you'd like to call them. And then there's another cable that's going to run here under this EMI shield. Let's go ahead and take this EMI shield off. Again, using the metal spudger just to lift gently. Let's see what we've got. With these shields, you'll notice that they've got a little bit of a hook here, so it grasps onto where it needs to sit as it's in there. 
<clears throat> All right, so underneath we've got the new 8 megapixel camera right here. We have uh, LCD and digitizer cables right here. We have probably one of these is going to be your proximity sensor. It looks like this long one here is going to be your headphone jack. And my suspicion is the third one under here is probably going to be a front facing camera. Uh, let's go ahead and pop some cables off and see what happens. Again, you want to be very, very gentle when you're lifting these cables up so as not to damage them or any of the connections underneath. Uh, because if you do that, you're going to end up probably needing a whole new logic board. The 8 megapixel camera and the flash are here. Notice that there's not an arm on these like there were on the earlier iPhones, iPhone 4s. Let's see. This one, I believe, is a headphone board. Yep. Looks like this one, this cable right here, comes down, routes around here, and comes up. So my money is this is your rear facing, your front facing camera. Right there. And then this is going to be your proximity sensor, probably. The proximity sensor cable is probably going to run from the home, the hold switch at the top, power button, over to the sensor that picks up whether your ear is near the phone or not. And my understanding is that the proximity sensor may also trigger Siri to work, which is probably the most spectacular feature on this new phone. <clears throat> so it looks like everything is more or less clear here. Let's see if we can lift this board out. Well, we forgot the most important part, SIM card tray. Uh, normally I would say use a SIM tool. Pin lobe screwdriver is small enough that it will fit in the hole. To pressure that out. We'll remove the SIM card tray with, of course, a standard AT&T SIM card in there, as this is the GSM version. And let's lift this board and see what happens. So I'm feeling a little bit of hold there, so there's... There's something else holding this in place. Looks like there's another shield right here. Let's see what it is. Looks like there's something with adhesive. I'm not going to peel that. There's another antenna related EMI shield. Again, don't know how well you can see this, but hopefully pretty well. Uh, and the second of those screws I was telling you about, they take the flathead, but they have a screw hole recessed inside of them. I guess I should probably learn what the, the proper name of that is. Notice that this one is considerably longer than the first one we took out. So you should be able to see, hopefully, this is the one that goes on the top, this is the one that goes lower. And it looks like there is one more, one more cable to loosen right here. Release that. And it's just a BNC connector. It's just a little antenna connection there. And it looks like everything is set to come out now. Almost. What are we missing? Hmm. Looks like there's a sticker in the top corner here. I wonder if that's attached to anything. I'll gently scrape that up a little bit. Use some tweezers and peel that back and see what's underneath. Ah, 